Let's go. All right. Let's get into it. Ooh, ooh. Welcome back, y'all. <laughs> To another episode of Bad and Bar. Mm-hmm. Welcome back, welcome back, That's, welcome no. back. <laughs> we didn't decide Y'all, on that. It's your girl Avi B, and guess what? But my girl Kitty K is back. I am back. Yes, I'm excited. From the underground, I feel like I was under a rock yeah. for the last like two and a half months. Um, I was studying for the bar, right? And I will say, like, people tell you it's gonna be bad. But there's nothing to prepare you for how bad it really is. <laughs> like, I can sit here and tell people, like, oh, do this, do that, and it's going to be tough. It's going to be – but you you don't know, know until you do it. Like Ain't nothing like it. It's literally not. It is a beast of its own making, and – I'm just glad it's done. It's over with. You free. It's above me now. You free. And you don't ever have to do it again if you don't Amen. want to. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that part. If I don't want to. If you don't want to, you never if have I to do it again. To. I certainly don't plan to ever take another bar mm-hmm. ever again. So when yeah. folks ask me what state I'm barred in, North Carolina and North Carolina only, unless I'm pro hawking somewhere with a motion to get into another court, that's it for me. Never doing it again. And I always, I thought it was a surprise because I, you took the bar when? 2018? 18. I just took it in 2024. And so much has changed so even much. between those like six years because I thought you took the MBE. Nope. UBE. Or the UBE. Yeah, correct. No, I did. Which is now, if if people don't know, because everybody just say like, the bar, yeah, you know? Right. So, but... When Avi took it, she just only could be barred into North Carolina. That's right. And so now states have adopted the UBE, the Uniform Bar Exam, which yeah. will give you kind of like reciprocity in a various different states. Whichever states are like signed up in the yeah. UBE, there are states that still are not. Um, so I, when I become barred, I can practice in a lot of different states. <laughs> Am I bragging? Way to brag. <laughs> Thank you so much. Am I bragging? Yeah, I'm a big time hater. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was the last, my class was the last class to take an official North Carolina bar. Mm-hmm. And, you know, after that, they adopted this whole UBE thing. So you can wave into whatever yep. state, you know, so long as your score is high enough, wave into whatever state you want to. Yeah. And North Carolina has one of the like higher scores. So you if you do North Carolina, if you can pass in North Carolina, you can pass anywhere. You can pass anywhere. Ah! <laughs> So when I want to win an argument with her now, I'm going to say, come to South Carolina. Well, you can't. (laughs) (laughs) Well, as y'all hear, Mm -hmm. the dynamic duo is back. And today we we getting into it. We are talking, of course, about this election. More specifically, I know, right? It's been crazy. Kendall's been under a rock studying Mm -hmm. for the bar, so she ain't have to watch it as perilously as I did. But today, we're just going to dive a little bit, just a little bit, into the Electoral College because I feel like it is a foreign term where people just know what that is. Like, they know the term. Oh, yeah, Electoral College, 538. A lot of people don't actually know what that means. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to just break it down a little bit in simple terms for folks to get an understanding of what it means when you are going to cast your vote for Mm -hmm. the President of the United States. So we know that right now we are in a very heated um, election between Kamala Mm -hmm. (laughs) and Donald Trump. Um, So Vice President Harris was officially named by, um, well, she will officially be named Mm -hmm. this week at the Democratic National Convention as the Democratic Party um, person who's going to be on our ballot. And so what does it mean when we go to cast our vote? And, right. it's, you know, what is, what's crazy to me is that a lot of people think when we go to check a name on the ballot, we are choosing that person. So, for example, come October, early voting or November, when you go to vote, mm-hmm. you're checking Kamala Harris's name or Donald Trump, God forbid, <laughs> Um you're checking their name on that ballot, but in actuality, you are casting a vote for an elector, right. a member of the Electoral College. So what is that? Let's right. get into it. So we know that we have um, a state system and a federal system, right? So when we are looking at the federal system, we have um, two branches within our Congress, which is the House of Reps and the Senate. Right. Total, it comes to, I think... 
538. 535. Yeah. 535? 535 members because that extra three right. from D.C. There you go. Uh-huh. The three from D.C. So we know that D.C. It should start like a state. little like band. The three from D.C. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> the three from D.C. D.C. is not a state, but they do get electors, even yeah. though they don't get official representation, should. you know, in the House of Representatives or Senate. So mm-hmm. we each, each of our states has you know, two senators that that get elected. So we have a hundred total. And then we each have House of Representatives members based upon the population of the state. Right. So there's 435 House of Reps, a hundred senators. That brings us to 535. Um, so we get 535 electors plus the three from DC. Mm-hmm. That's how we get to the 538. Who are these people? They are people that are just chosen by the parties in that state. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that there's a little bit of nonsense in that because a lot of times they choose family members, their sons and daughters. Like yeah. it's it's a lot of p- politicking in that and who they choose because there are no rules. The electors get to be chosen by whoever's holding the party at that time in yeah. that state. But would it matter? Like they're chosen by the party. And I think some people's concern is like, we don't know who these people are. Right. They don't have to have a certain, um, you know, resume specifically. Right. But at the end of the day, they're chosen by the party. So yeah. that's where their vote is going. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So so what happens, what Kendall was saying is that let's say North Carolina, which is a swing state, miraculously comes together and chooses Kamala Harris. All of uh, uh, the majority of the population that votes mm-hmm. chooses Kamala Harris. What does that mean? The electors for the electoral, co- electoral college in the state of North Carolina have to put their vote for Kamala Harris. Actually, they don't have to. It's not required. It's just, you know, common practice. That's what they right. do. And that's what has happened. Um, and so they're going to put their votes in the hat for Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. In North Carolina, we get 14 people. So all this swing state talk is, is you know, it's a really big deal because North Carolina is one of those. Yeah. And what happens here um, really matters because she needs those 14 electoral votes mm-hmm. along with the, I think, seven other swing states to mm-hmm. matter. We already know the bigger states, right? Like California is generally a Democratic state. Right. She knows she's going to get those 54 votes. But in North Carolina, to get to the majority, which is 270, mm-hmm. She needs those 14. Right. And so it, that's why they focus on these swing states or these battleground states. She's been here several times um, and, and they're going to continue to go to these states mm-hmm. to figure out, OK, how can we pull in these electoral college votes? Right. Ultimately, there's a lot of nuance to the electoral college. And what it boils down to is the founding fathers wrote the Constitution. And they were getting aggy about who was going to have the represent- representation in the states. Mm-hmm. They didn't want the states with the biggest populations to have the most power, right? And so they split it up in this way. And it's not a one party, one vote thing, which yeah. is what it should be. Yeah. Most people feel like we should be a popular vote state, like a popular vote country where right. the majority wins. Mm-hmm. That's not what we have here. We have a situation where... Not in the presidential election. Not in the presidential election. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Where, like what we saw in 2016, where Hillary Clinton won the majority, Mm -hmm. like, of the country's votes, but didn't get the 270 for the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. It's a little tricky. Um, I feel like it would take us probably an hour just to break into the nuances of the Electoral College. But what ultimately we should understand is that when we're going into the polls, we are voting. Yes, we're casting our vote for this person that we see that's in the TV and on the news. But really, we're casting our vote for the person that's behind the scenes. Right. The Electoral College member that's going to put their votes, all of their votes for this party that's going to ultimately decide the fate of this country because we know that this is a serious one. So what do you think about that? There's a problem. Um, yeah, I do think it's problematic. I get the premise behind not wanting big states to choose and control Mm -hmm. the, you know, the ultimate fate of the country. But don't they end up doing that anyway? Because they get more More votes than we do. (laughs) They get more electoral college people than we do if they're a bigger state or smaller state. Yeah. So at the end of the day... Well, it matters when you break it down proportionally, mm-hmm. right? So if you were to look at, for example, where I said California, I think it's 54 there, North Carolina 14. Mm-hmm. 
all 54 generally go to the Democratic Party. That's not always the case right. in some of the swing states. And so the pro the proportionality matters because we've seen where all the big states mm -hmm. went blue and still, right, the right. Electoral College from the little itty bitty small states, those numbers add up. They do. And so, you know, when you, when you break it down mathematically, mm -hmm. <laughs> it matters. I, I, I'm not going to break down a formula right now, but if I could, I would explain it and say, like, in a way that the size is not the only thing that matters. They want it to be fair. Um, and, and really, the founding fathers would probably look at what they did today and say, this ain't what we had meant. <laughs> I mean, I think, because the thing about it is, I feel like what I had heard um, somewhere was people were saying that, they feel as though we really shouldn't like harp on this because that might discourage people. Yeah. You know, they yeah. might say, well, my vote, because people say that anyway, my without, vote don't even, count. without even knowing all of this. Yeah. My vote don't count. Yeah. What yeah. am I going to go vote for? Yeah, that's true. I'm glad that you say that because somebody commented that on a TikTok video that I posted. Well, my vote doesn't really matter anyways. And right. to that, I would say that that's not true because every single vote sways the electoral vote right. so it does matter you're voting for whoever this electoral voter is that's going to cast their votes for Kamala or Trump every little vote does matter in that sense right because if the majority of the state votes that way then they send their full force of electoral votes in the way that the state says so it does in the grand scheme of things matter matter okay. every vote matters it does and it's important you know better get out to the polls get out during early voting just as a quick note you should check right now to see if you're registered to vote if you're still on the polls and what the voting requirements are in North Carolina we now have a vote Voter ID requirement. So mm. you have to take a um, picture ID of you when you go to vote. And you need to make sure you have that because that has not been the case in the past. There have been a lot of lawsuits filed to challenge it. That lawsuit ultimately was unsuccessful. Um, I was one of the attorneys on that case. Um, and, you know, right now we have to have an ID this election. So yeah. we need to make sure that the voters know that. Um, because the way that the voter ID laws have been written in the state is to very intentionally restrict certain populations, <clears throat> black people, from voting. And so we want to make sure that we have the appropriate ID and right. that we're signed up and registered. You can register during early voting. You cannot register on the day of um voting with out, out of your precinct so you need to yeah. make sure before November i have to do 5th, that myself yeah i just moved. moved yeah yeah so now that you've moved you need to get re i don't want a charlotte id though <laughs> i don't want to change my but i've been uh, what i've been doing is just like mailing absentee. in in that case like you can do exactly what you just said do yeah. absentee voting now with the new voter id law there's a requirement that you do a photocopy of your id inside of the envelope exactly so they added to make it a little more challenging for absentee voters. So you need to take your oh, ID, ghetto. get a copy of it, and attach it to your ballot when you do absentee voting. Exactly. And for <sighs> some people, for example, elderly people who don't know how to work a copying machine or who don't have access to one. That's I don't have access to one. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about older you have people. to go out of your way. Yeah, right? I would. I would. You have to go out of your way. Definitely. And see, that's why that that law was challenged so like vigorously because mm -hmm. it's a barrier for people. We should be making it as easy as possible for people to vote. Right. And unfortunately, we don't live in a state where that is the case because mm -hmm. when they saw that black people were voting in mass, yeah. and particularly in the past for black representatives, they said, "Oh, hold up, now wait a minute." <laughs> <laughs> We need to reel this thing back in. Right. So um, let's talk a little bit about Kamala Harris and who she is and her name and all the things. What do right. you think, Kenny K? What do I think? I think what I think a lot of people think is <laughs> I don't know her. Mm. I don't know who she is. I support her. Yeah. You know, just off honestly. And I know people will be like, oh, well, that's not right. You know, but off, literally off the strength of her being a black woman and her being not Trump. <laughs> At this point, it's just not Trump, you know? And so, um, but I will say, I mean, I know people have seen like the Stephen A. Smith um, interview. Right. And a lot of people have been coming out saying that she has not been being vocal enough. Yeah. She's not done interviews. Yeah. Um, you just really haven't seen much from her. Yeah. But I, I'm giving her a little bit of grace only in the fact of like, when when did we even announce that she was when did this happen like a month ago maybe i feel like it's been maybe like 
five weeks, Maybe. if I'm not mistaken. All I know is this only had like 120 days. Like yeah. between the day that it was announced to election day. Right. Like she got a couple of months to, right. to pull it together. Right. So let me see what you do in 120 days okay. in a presidential election. That and part. you might not be going on a media tour. Right. You might be... Getting your ducks in a row, getting your stuff together, getting your funding, you know, all this kind of stuff that comes with the president. I mean, people have years to plan presidential campaigns. Granted, she did have one because wasn't she trying to run for as the Democratic Party, you know, um, years ago previously. So she might have some from that. But that was before COVID. That was, you know, almost a different time. We're in these unprecedented times. right now. (laughs) (laughs) I love this video. I saw I was like. I would like to go back to the precedented. Please. We, <laughs> it's unprecedented. I don't like it here. It's not for me. It's not for me. Take me back. <laughs> Take me back to the precedent. Okay. Very ghetto. It's very ghetto. So, yeah. So, like, we're in different times now. And I'm giving my girl grace. Yeah. I am. But That's I good. don't But I don't know her that yeah. well. And I think, you know, what you're saying is real. I yeah. feel like a lot of voters probably feel like that. And mm-hmm. the reality is, I feel like that's the case for a lot of politicians. Mm-hmm. Like, their information is not widely accessible. Like, you have to dig in. You have to do the work. And right. for a lot of people, we got real life day-to-day issues mm-hmm. that we're focusing on to the point where we can't sit down and and write down every policy right. that Kamala Harris and her team have ever enacted, right? right. Like, we have real life day-to-day stuff where it's hard yeah. to learn who the who these candidates are without doing all this extra research. And so I think you're speaking to what a lot of people probably feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, for me, like, I'm really into politics. And so I, like, use social media to for that reason. Like, right. I'd make sure that I'm following credible sources. Mm. <laughs> and I listen to podcasts yeah. and things like that so that, like, when I'm, trans, you know, trans transporting from here to there or whatever I can listen to this information while mm-hmm. I'm on the go and try to like figure out who's this person what are their policies what are their right. stance on this what was their stance on that and interestingly talking about stances one thing that has come up a lot for Kamala is mm-hmm. this whole top cop thing mm-hmm. because I don't know if you remember but when um, Joe Biden announced that Kamala was going to be his VP pick, mm-hmm. she came out. I, I listened to an interview just yesterday because I was trying to figure out who named her top cop. She mm-hmm. said it herself. She said, I am the top cop. Ooh. And so I want to know what do you think about that and, mm. you know, how this rhetoric is playing out right now, because that was, you know, almost four years ago yeah. when she came out as top cop Kamala. Yeah, I well, so like we said, we don't really know where her stance is at this moment. Um, I think that was a thing. And even the Republicans um, felt that she was top cop. Everybody yep. called her. I remember you. Um, and I did. But not too far away from that. And I did. Uh-huh. And did. <laughs> and eat the words now. <laughs> But everybody said she was very, like, hard on crime. She locked up all these um, black people, yep. all these people of color, you know. And I was listening to a podcast this morning, and it did give me, like, a different perspective yeah. on her as far as, like, you have to realize she grew up in a different time. Right. And I think even you and I sitting here, like, our parents are Democrats, but we know that their thoughts and their views are completely different than ours. Absolutely. Even though, like, we all would like the same goal of reaching, you know, like, you know, civil rights and things like that. Right. Um, we have very different ways that we would go about it. My father was a police officer. Yeah. So I have never had issue, um, I will say, with, like, people who are doing their job and doing it correctly. Yeah. And so I'm not going to take too many, too much issue to her as a prosecutor doing her job. Yeah. And so there were people who, even though it's like, okay, especially back in that time, back in the 80s, yeah. it was, you know, the crack epidemic, and it was all these epidemics, and people wanted crime out of their community. Yep. And that was, unfortunately, a lot of black people who were committing these crimes in black communities. I'm not talking about white communities. I'm yep. talking about in black communities. Yeah. It was black people committing these crimes. And people were like, I want my neighborhood to be safe. I want my kids to go outside and not feel like they have to join a gang to be protected or yeah. that, you know, they have to run the streets or whatever. We They want safety in their neighborhoods. And so that meant getting these people off the street. Right. And so she ran on that type of platform. Yep. And so I don't think, like, I could exactly blame her for that. I'm not going to call her a top cop for that. Yeah. And I feel like if people just put things in perspective, 
um, I think we will understand. It's hard for us that we, we weren't there. You know, right. we weren't there in the 80s. We don't know what that life was like. I wasn't even raised in like a urban neighborhood. I was raised in the suburbs. I right. didn't have those problems, you know? <laughs> so I'm just like, I can understand why people felt the way they do. I can understand why my parents felt the way they do, right. you know? Like, I think about also, you know, when I watch movies and things, it's like, Everybody conflates thinking that like, okay, back in the days in the civil rights movements and things like that, that if you were black, you were on the bus, you were on the freedom rides, you were, yeah. but nobody talks about the people who, who weren't, yeah. who were like, the regular not, everyday people, the regular, I'm not doing everyday, all that. I'm not getting involved they're getting arrested over there. <laughs> I ain't going over there. <laughs> they getting killed over there. I'm not going over there. Yeah. You know? Right. And so... We are not, like, we, I say this often, black is not a monolith. Yep. We are not one thing. Just because you are black does not mean you are a Black Panther, you know? Like, <laughs> some people are just like, I just want to... I just want to be a normal person. I just want to be and exist. I just want to be and exist and work and get what I'm due and pay my dues. That part. You know? Yeah. What do you think? Ooh. Because you flip-flopped. I didn't flip-flop. Did you not? Let's make it clear. <laughs> <laughs> I called top Kamala Top Cop back there. Mm -hmm. For one, that's what she named herself. Okay. And truthfully, when you look at her policies and look at what she's saying now, she hasn't fully distanced herself from that rhetoric. Right. So I completely agree with what you're saying that we need to look at things in context, mm -hmm. right? Because what you're talking about is when she was calling herself top cop from her past in the 80s when mm -hmm. she was a prosecutor, there was a totally different landscape. Violent crime was on the rise back mm -hmm. then. I was listening to something that said, and I can't remember if it was in New York, what city it was in New York, but where back then in the 80s, there were 3, 000, over 3,000 homicides mm -hmm. in one year. Mm -hmm. Today, that same city has experienced 300 homicides. Right. So violent crime looks different right. for certain cities right. than to now. Mm -hmm. And so I completely agree that we have to look at things in the historical perspectives to see what we're talking about, because you're right. A lot of black people back then also embraced that tough on crime politics, mm -hmm. right? They that, that was a real thing. You walk outside and you see certain things in your neighborhood. Right. You want something to change. All you know is that. Right. My issue is... When we look at things on a longer scale, I want to see your progress. I mm. want to see your politics progress. I want to say, I want you to see, like, for example, how Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton had to say, yes, we were wrong calling in people super predators in the 80s. Mm -hmm. They were in that same context, right? Right. We now know how the 80s and the crack ep epidemic and the war on crimes and the war on drugs has now affected black people and harmed our our community in such a violent, negative way mm -hmm. that we are dealing with it today in society. So, yes, I think it all that is appropriate. Right. I want to see how she's progressed and where she stands on things today. And so thinking about her policies while she was in office, mm -hmm. like what you were talking about when people were saying that she locked up all these black men. And when you look at the statistics, that's just not true. Like right. in terms of her putting forth a policy to not incarcerate low level um, drug offenders or for people who have marijuana, right? Mm -hmm. She made it a policy not to pr prosecute those types of things. Right. That shows some progression for me where I'm right. like, okay, I can see how back in the eighties, you know, you want to lock them up, throw away the key. But right. you know, later as things progressed, you know, you were putting in more work to be more forward thinking. Right. The reality is for me, as a super progressive liberal, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call me, is that she ain't liberal enough. You know, oh. like <laughs> I would like to see people take a much stronger stance on the liberal side, you know, in terms of the ideas about crime and all these things, mm -hmm. because I just find it so interesting that like Fox, Fox News and like, um, like I've been listening to uh, what's what's the Trump's VP person JD, JD? Vance mm -hmm. have been aligning themselves with law enforcement and law enforcement officers right. backing. She's Trump not a top cop no this. more. Yeah, she's not a top cop anymore. They called her quote a defund the police radical. <laughs> She was top cop. Now she's a defund the police radical. Yes. Show me the car facts. Mm -hmm. Where? Because maybe then I would be backing her like nothing if that were the case. Right. I'm just on my sister's side because she's a soror. Okay. Hello, Alpha Kappa Alpha. Ooh, that was then. 
I okay. I had to ask you about that because have you talked about that really? As far as like they were saying how mm-hmm. you know they can understand how Kamala is. They say you know there are certain people, uh, especially people of color, who are usually like invited to the table. Yeah, and these are not really the people who are going to flip the table over. Factual, though. and they related that to her being in and AKA a- AKA Hello, and said those are the bougie girls, and that's true. those are the girls who are like you know they're. They're pretty. You're not, yes. Y'all not flipping the tables over. I agree. Uh-huh. And that is often a critique that I have of my sorority. Now, you know, comparing things historically, mm-hmm. right? Like, if you look at things in, in context, right. when our sorority was founded in 1908, we were moving and shaking things, mm-hmm. right? But, you know, in, in the grand retrospect, we're not this super progressive, super, mm-hmm. like, left-leaning organization. No. Now, you know, did I know what you're talking about in that interview? They're saying that the AKAs are not the natural hair rockers with the fist throw, right. with the fist raised at the protest. Right. And again, to that, I would say we ain't a monolith because I yeah, you are. <laughs> am she in AKA. But you didn't become that until you went to law school, I feel. No, I was at UNC Charlotte organizing marches and protests for the NAACP chapter in which I started. So that's but I feel not like true. you got very No, I don't I don't think you've like changed completely. I don't think you were one side and then another side, but I do think you became a lot more radical, radical when I learned the you, law. Yes. When from 100,000%. Okay. Yes, learning the law made me much more radical. Right. Absolutely. But I've always been mm-hmm. marching, organizing and you protesting have. for my people. That's very true. And that was before AKA and both after AKA. Mm-hmm. So I, I would, to that interview or whatever, say that, again, all AKAs ain't the same. We not all light-skinned, prissy and pretty, all the things, you know, whatever have you, because those are not requirements to be an official member. Right. It, some of us are shaking the table. Some of mm-hmm. us are movers and shakers in our community. But we are mobilizing people to the polls. Right. We are educating people. Like, we are serving and giving back in mass throughout the globe. Okay. So that was just a little tangent. Yeah. But I really did want to ask you, okay, because you have already said you're very liberal. Um, do you think somebody like you <laughs> could, could what? become president? <laughs> Do you, but I, like I find that very like you, you have a side and it's very clear. Like yeah. I have always become more like moderate. Right. I'm very I'm not super liberal. Right. I'm not conservative. Um, but I feel like I kind of stand in the middle of yeah. some of these things. Right. And so I'm like, would somebody like you be able to be nominated? That's a great question mm-hmm. because if you take a look back, right, mm-hmm. the, the ancestors would have never saw Barack Obama no. or Kamala Harris yeah. as a pig. Right. <laughs> so if we look forward. They're a little too white for them. I mean, you, well, no, I'm saying in terms of ancestors, I'm thinking about slaves, right? They would have never seen a black, oh, a okay. black nominee, okay. right? And right. then, yes, you're right that there are several people who felt like those pigs were too white or mm-hmm. too, you know, whatever. Um, but... If we look forward 20 or 30 years to see where we'll be, Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's potential for someone who is much more progressive in their thinking and alignment, right? Because we know right now, like, our so-so progressive was Bernie and feel the burn happen in what, 2016? Mm -hmm. And not many people could get on board. He had, you know, a a big group of supporters, but in mass, no. Yeah. He was a little too progressive, right? He was quite older though. I mean, he was an old, you know, little weird white man. (laughs) I just still remember that meme of him at the inauguration. Sitting there in that coat. (laughs) Stumped over. (laughs) We love you, Bernie, but sir, oh my God. homie was sleep. <laughs> How you sleep with the inauguration? <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's who I would have wanted in there anyways. <sighs> um, mm-hmm. You know, I just think that America right now, there's no room for someone like me. Yeah. We are far too, far too. Um, Fight the power. <laughs> <laughs> Me, yes. yes this uh-huh. country is still very much racist, still very much. I mean, and that is true. Look at the yeah. way that they're attacking Kamala and Trump saying, I didn't even know she was black. I thought she was Asian. Like, it's just, just nonsense. He's just, first of all, I, like, that's my thing with Trump. Yeah. Say what you will about the man, but he he can't even take a stance and stick to it. Yeah. I think that would be a problem for me. Like, I see that as, like, somebody 
Would I want a person like that to be my friend? Would I want a flip flopper to be my friend? Would I want to date a flip flopper? Would I want somebody like I definitely don't want that person running the country. Like you say one thing in one interview, right. and then you'll completely change in the next interview and the next day. Like it's not even like okay, these Consistent. are years no. of you know difference of opinion. Right, he'll change opinion. No matter wherever he's sitting. He's done that several times. Oh, several times. <laughs> and I think that that speaks larger to his base, to his community, or excuse me, to his to his fans, mm -hmm. to his MAGA maggots. Yeah. I think that it speaks to the fact that they aren't actually listening, right? They don't care. They don't care. And that's very obvious. They do not care. Yeah. They are just politically aligned with what they see right. as racist, sexist, homophobic. Yeah. Like, they just see the caricature right. of Trump. They don't see or listen mm -hmm. to what he's actually saying. Because if we listen to some of the things he actually said, and if you look back at some of the things that he's done, they may not be as aligned as they think they are. And it's the fact that, you know, in 2003, when Kamala ran for, I think it was um, Attorney General, mm -hmm. um, Donald Trump donated to her campaign right. because they were quote unquote, he, he supported her being a top cop right. and because she was so friendly to law enforcement. And so right. now we flipping and saying she's DEI defund the police. Yeah. Not, 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 but your money says otherwise. Right. Your dollar said otherwise. He, he is a flip, flip, flopping, flip, flopping <laughs> ass bitch. <laughs> Please. In the words of our queen B, excuse mm -hmm. my mouth. Um, and you know, what really baffles me the most, it's not Donald Trump because he knows what he's doing. Right. He said years ago when he was a TV star that if I ever ran, I would run Republican because they can be controlled. They can. It blows me that like, there's no common sense. There's no, they will argue you down. Mm -hmm. I've been watching videos a little too much time on TikToks, mm -hmm. specifically political TikTok, where people have been going to Donald Trump rallies and interviewing people. And like the interviewer will be like, how would you feel if, or what would you have to say finding out that Joe Biden had, yeah. um, you know, been found liable for sexually assaulting a woman? Right. What would you say about that? And how would you feel if you knew that he was convicted of 34 felonies? Anyway, right. That Joe Biden needs to burn in hell. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, and that's why we don't think he should be running the country. Like exactly. they had all these things to say. And then the interviewer was like, oh, my bad, my bad. That was actually Trump. Like I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, well, well, well you know, well, women, well, women should be to the sideline anyway. You know, like they were, they were literally flip flopping themselves. <laughs> So it's no yeah. matter in between the brains. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. happening up there for me. And even like, let's say you're not in support of Kamala, you for whatever reason, I want people to give me like actual sensical reasons mm -hmm. as to why this uh, like scam artist yeah. should run the quote unquote free nation. Like I can't. Right. I, I can't conceptualize it. And, yeah. you know, looking like Please. him with the <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> My I brain can't. can't make sense of it. And right. it just bothers me. And I think what mostly bothers me is how many of them there are. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought it was just a little bit. No. no. I mean, he was president. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it, that doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Still, like, no. his base has grown. Yeah. Because people, after Joe Biden, they're like, oh, he was terrible. <laughs> You know, some people feel very strongly about that. A lot of black people as well. I've yeah. seen a lot of black people. I think that's what's surprising me. Yeah, same. Um, mainly is like there are a lot, particularly black men, though, yeah. I feel, um, that are very much pro-Trump. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, he's a good businessman. Or, you know, Joe didn't really do what he was supposed to do. Yeah. But I feel like, once again, how we talked about in the last um, podcast that we had yeah. together when we were talking about him. The NFL and stuff like that. Like, they're like you, ha the current president takes on what the last president did. Right. There is, you don't come into the office and it'd be a brand new day. <laughs> That's just not how that works. You know, we would love for that to be the reality. Like, okay, once that person gets out, a new person comes in and starting it's starting fresh. We're starting fresh. 
Yes, but that's not the truth. Right. So if you feel like Joe has done a bad job. Look what he was handed. Look what he got handed. You feel, then you're really upset with what Trump did. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because that's what he had to deal with. And he's cleaning up the mess. which He's is a- cleaning up a lot of mess. And, you know, I don't think he's well. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to pray for him. I am. But, <laughs> I, I mean, I did feel like a lot of people felt as far as, like, I don't think he's equipped. Yeah. At this at this moment in time. Yeah. You know, not to say that I thought he was like a bad person or anything like that. I right. just, you know, he was an older man. And he was struggling. And, and he was struggling. Yeah. That's why. And I tell Avi, me and her life about it. But like when it became that he was dropping out of the race, because he had just said like the week before <laughs> that I ain't never dropping out of this race. Y'all going to have a, you know, he put his foot down. Yeah, he did. But he did not stay in no business because then the next week. <laughs> He flip flop too. He flip flop too. And I was like, "Oh, brother Joe, <laughs> let's go, let's go and get the obituary written because my homie on on the way out. Girl had killed he, this man off. <laughs> well, he just got COVID, and then right. it got announced that he was dropping out of the race. I was like, "Oh, oh Lord no, Jesus! They don't took Joe. They don't took Joe. COVID done got him. But now he's up and well. And yeah. I was like, "Oh, okay. Yeah. So I can imagine if I'm surprised, there are tons of other people surprised, especially even Kamala probably is yeah. like was like, oh. Me? Uh, hold on, me. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, yeah. so it's uh, it's it's just, what a time. Yeah, what truly a time, what a time to be alive. So I don't want to underplay though the role that Black people and Hispanic people are going to play when it comes to the election. Yeah, sure. Like what we see on social media, it looks like they're you know Trump supporters in mass. Mm-hmm. I I don't believe it. I just don't. I think that you don't. No, I don't think that. Not Black. Trump supporters in mass. White folks, they're going to do what they want to do. You ain't been yes. on the shade room comments. No. Yeah. No. And what I believe is the people in the shade room comments don't actually go vote. A lot of them. Ooh. Those those black men in the shade room comments are there to troll. A lot of them ain't going to take That's their true. butts to the poll. Like, That's let's true. be so for real. Yeah. I think, like, for one, the population that is really being left out, which now has a higher, I think, voting percentage population is Hispanic voters. I want to know where they lie on this issue because that's something that, yeah. you know, hasn't been talked about a lot. But they make up a large percentage of people of, of the voting. They're the population. largest minority. Yeah. I had absolutely no idea. <laughs> when, I, when I saw that, I thought the news had gotten it wrong. I yeah. said, hold up. Yeah. Yeah. So where do they stand on this? You know? That's something that I think we should explore. I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. To be honest with you, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know fully either, but I am, I don't know, maybe I'm just being a little too Barack Obama-y in my hope stance mm-hmm. for America. I'm just believing that, like, we're going to turn up and we're going to turn up in mass. Like, okay, I, I'm going to keep the hope because that's all that I have. I cannot imagine mm-hmm. if Trump gets back in power what he will do. What I do want to know is why ain't nobody talking about what's going to happen if Trump loses like if he loses Mm -hmm. we thought that he ain't want to hand over the power to Joe right you think he just gonna turn over the power to a black woman and just he doesn't have any power right now and walk well yeah true true but essentially lose to a black woman yeah and just walk and say yes I lost no like he's already painting the picture right now Mm -hmm. to say that this election's rigged (laughs) like already started talking like that because he's crazy the moment that he's <laughs> the moment that kamala was announced he already stopped started talking about the rig stuff yeah and we saw the result of him saying that before mm-hmm. was a full insurrection yeah <laughs> it was i mean i don't know i don't i really just don't know like i i don't think at this point that we can even guess yeah. As, because nobody saw the insurrection happening. Exactly. Which is why now there needs to, is anybody safety planning? Like, let's hope. Is there, well, we God, know I that hope. the Democrats don't think ahead. They're very reactionary and very responsive. Mm-hmm. So it would really baffle me if anybody was safety planning. Right now, the only thing they're thinking about is this election. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's thinking about if he, if he loses. Yeah. What is his base going to do? We know that there are very violent people. We know that they will go through any measure that he tells them to. Right. So if he tell them, hey, this election is rigged. I need y'all to go out, which is what he said. Right. Right. Like. What what they gonna do? <laughs> I, I I I yeah. But that's the thing, and I feel like, and I kind of, I it's not 
apples and oranges. And it's not, you can't really make the correlation and things like that. But I mean, I feel like we can say the Democratic Party is very reactionary. Right. But also in that sense of you have to think that what the Democrats' views are is is a lot more liberal and is is to give people a lot more um, leeway. Right. And so, like, I remember when I was working, you know, for the FBI, I was working, working in law enforcement. And when people, when, you know, all these, like, mass shootings would happen and people would be, like, on t- t- Twitter and TikTok and every social media platform saying, like, why didn't y'all stop these people? Like, yeah. you knew that they were on, um, you know, Reddit and stuff right. saying these things. You knew that they had guns. You knew all this stuff. Why didn't anybody come in and stop these people right. before they did that? And, you know, the answer was usually, like, well, we can't. Yeah. You know, we cannot go, like, just because you say something on Reddit, right. you know, or just because you, like, might threaten You can't get arrested for that. Right. Yeah, because we have the First Amendment. And so we have free speech in this country. Exactly. Say things. And we don't want to move to this like authoritarian, like autocracy, you know, thing where the government can just come in and arrest you for any little thing. Right. And so I wouldn't call that being liberal. I would call that like living in a democracy where like people have rights. Well, the Republicans aren't living in a democracy. (laughs) (laughs) It's debatable whether any of us are, truthfully. (laughs) That part. Um, but you're right. And so while I don't think that we need to, I mean, they're already gathering our data and capturing our behavior anyways. I'm not saying there needs to be this big brother out here tracking Mm -hmm. these MAGA folks, but I'm just saying there needs to be a safety plan in place. Yeah. So that when all hell breaks loose on November 6th, 7th or 8th, whenever the results are announced, Mm -hmm. like, we can still be safe and we're not enacting another civil war. Like, I just think that they're going to cut a fool. I do. Of course. But I feel like they'll do it in a way that you also didn't expect. Like, every day the goalpost gets moved. Every day we (laughs) think, like, something, that that can never happen. (laughs) Because how, how, let's let's be honest, how were they able to get up in there in the first place? (laughs) Let's talk about that. They literally just walked up. They literally just walked up in there. (laughs) They had to, people were like, oh my God, they... No, they walked in there. Talk about white privilege. Wow. They walked in there. With and their cut, guns. With guns. <laughs> they didn't have to break no barriers. They didn't have to do anything extra. They walked in there. My God. Lord help us. Let's be honest. Let's so at the end of the day, you know, it's like, yeah, now they might have like security measures there, but then they're going to act a fool at the back door or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you just never know. You never know these days. So... Uh, let's you know are we gonna get into our last topic let's now let's hit it okay. we got five minutes left okay let's get into five minutes of girl talk y'all know this is where I thrive right here <laughs> what's the girl talk let's case? get into okay so I saw it on the shade room the other day and it was could you date somebody who was on the opposite side of the aisle from you yeah. you are a stand hard a go hard um you know democrats and liberal could you date a republican a conservative man yeah i think i think that's a really inter- interesting question i just want to note that i hate the shade room i think it's anti black don't but- do the shade room uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> <laughs> no, that you are a shade room consumer. Yes. So I'm going to indulge for the sake of you. Could I mm-hmm. realistically date a Republican or anybody that's on the other side of the aisle? Mm. We both know the answer to that. No, you no. Like, let's be we so for real. Can. Let's let's be so, so for real. Yeah. Um, But let's talk about you because that's just a, that's a no brainer for me. Let's talk about you. I could. <laughs> tell, I could. Us, tell us about it. Miss I, I, moderate. <laughs> I mean, okay, it would depend, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are coming out and saying, like, you know, because I saw, like, people had on shirts the other day, it was, like, day one dictator. Like, if Trump gets in, he's going to be a day one dictator. And, like, okay, what? Like, that's a little strange. But if it was a person like that, (laughs) like, if you were super, like, right wing, yeah, no. Okay. No, I could not. Yeah. But if he was a Republican Mm -hmm. and he had his reasons— And, you know, like for whatever, because even though like people act like just because you are this or that, that means you have to vote for that nominee. You don't. Right. You know, so he could be a Republican, but still want to vote for Kamala. Right. You know, so I'm not going to I'm not going to X you out just because you're a self-proclaimed Republican. Republican. So, you know, I feel like I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, um, which I feel like is my legal training or whatever. It's always to see both sides. Yeah. You know? 
And I think that that's real. That's very modest of you to see things that way. But for me, prior to Donald Trump, I could see that. Yeah. Right. For me now, there's no difference between a Republican and a MAGA maggot. They're the same. Really? They're yeah. so aligned. Yes. Uh, there's there's no be... such thing as the Republican Party anymore. There's not. I mean, it's it, sure we have what Republicans for Harris. Yeah. Now this campaign that came out because they want to disassociate themselves right. from the MAGA right wing you know, Mm -hmm. crew. But in reality, in the grand scheme of things, the Republican Party, they're like, they're falling in line. Yeah. At large, they have already proclaimed Trump is their person. Like they're going to support him. These are the same people who we've seen, right? Do all this nonsense in the courts, put Mm -hmm. forth all of these Trump appointed, um, Um, federal judges right Right. we see what they've done to the supreme court they're aligned sure some of them may be country hillbilly whatever but look at jd vance like yeah that's who they appeal to right there's no difference anymore Mm -hmm. in modern day society than the republican party and their extreme maggots yeah the same to me and so prior to donald trump there may have been some folks some black people who are republicans because you know fiscally it makes more sense because i got more money right sure like i know those types of black folks Mm -hmm. i have more money so i'm a republican because i don't want the taxes right 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 today (laughs) while you still may have you know that type of mindset yeah I think that those people are so aligned that they can't be removed from each other. I just don't. Well, I mean, listen, everybody's going to have to feel the way they feel. I think that you can see the good in people. I don't know. Call me naive. Call me whatever. I don't think it's naive, though. I think it's I think it's a proper way to see things. I don't I, I would I would hate to live. In a world where I did think that, like yeah. your head must hurt all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't because I've cultivated in my space and my community in a way that I don't even see those types of humans. Like, and, and it's bad. Yeah. It's yeah. It, it, you know more people say we should have conversations right. with people who are more diverse, opinions and so on and so forth. And I do. And you think, should. I think that there's value in diversity. Right. But if you coming on some MAGA type stuff, it's no conversation for us to have. I'm ready to swing, truthfully. Like, ah, it's, it, what are we going to talk about? You hate my existence simply because of the color of my skin and because I'm a woman and you think that I'm inferior. What can we talk the about? The First Amendment is for a marketplace of ideas. Yes, sure. Everybody should throw in. Exchange them. It, sh- it should not be like, if you're MAGA, completely no. And I have nothing to say to a MAGA MAGA. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't. Well, they don't have anything in their brains. They have nothing intelligible to say. They have no understanding of the law. They have no understanding of anything <laughs> sensical. So I'm not going to even engage in a conversation with them because when you argue with a with a with what does the Bible say? When you argue with a fool, who looks like the fool? It's just two fools arguing. You can't tell which one is the fool. I'm not gonna spend my time. We don't got time, child, to get into <laughs> it because we could go all day with this. But y'all let us know what y'all think. Yeah, we really want to know. And that's gonna be the end of this one, honey. Yeah, this was fun. Was it though? <laughs> No, we always have a good time. We love it. That's that's what started this, like yeah. us having these very different ideas, but still being able to be like, all right, girl, and I'll see you later. And yeah, like you, we have different opinions, yeah. right? I can talk to you. You're right. not a maggot. Like, Please, okay. <laughs> cut the show. Cut the show. Cut the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is fun. Thank y'all for tuning in to another yeah. episode. And we will see y'all next Hi. time. Bad and Bard. <laughs> <laughs> Turn our mics off. Yay!